everyone, it's Monday, it's four o'clock, and you are at home with me, Vanessa Kantav. We have a great show for you today. I've got two recipes. We're making salmon burger and a really great bacon cheeseburger, two of my favorites. We've also got some tips for you, conversations with Christian, and make sure you stick around till the end of the show because I'll be taking some of your questions. Let's get started. So first we're gonna start with the salmon burger. I started making these because I had a friend who didn't eat meat and I thought it would be really fun and it turns out I really, really like this burger. So we're gonna start first by making our topping for the burger, which is a kale slaw. All right, so we have our kale. All I've done here is just finely chopped our kale. So our salad dressing for this is simple. We're gonna use some mayonnaise, a little bit of toasted sesame oil, and then we're gonna add fresh lime juice as our acid and we'll whisk that together. So this is gonna be the basis for your dressing. And you can even go ahead and dress this a few minutes before you're getting ready to finish your burger. It's really simple. You wanna make sure that you don't use too much sesame oil. A little bit is enough and too much is way too much when it comes to sesame oil. So here we go, we have this really great consistency, which you can see, and this is gonna be our very simple dressing for our kale slaw. All right, so now we wanna prepare our patties. What I've done here is I have about a pound to two pounds of salmon, depending on how many burgers you wanna prepare. So you're looking for about eight ounces, which is half a pound for each burger. So here we're gonna make two burgers right now. I've taken the salmon and I just used my chef's knife to chop this really fine. So first we're gonna add our salmon right into a mixing bowl, just like that. And then we've got all of our different aromatics. So for this recipe, we're going to have some fresh scallion, which I'll chop for you. All right, so we'll go ahead and add the scallions right into our bowl. We also have some garlic here. We have some minced ginger, and then we're using something called Chinese Five Spice. If you cannot find Chinese Five Spice, I would recommend using ground allspice. Um, it's a similar flavor profile. All right, so we're gonna give this a nice mix. All right, so we have our mixture here. We're gonna shape these into two equal size patties. And just use your hands, just like this. These are really great. The difference between salmon and like a regular hamburger is that you're not gonna have a lot of shrinkage because there's not as much fat like you have in a burger. So you just wanna shape those and then we'll shape the second one just like this. So just sort of like a ball. And you can lay that here just like that. All right, so we're ready to take these over to the stove. Follow me. All right, so I've started with a nice hot pan on high heat. We're gonna put a little bit of oil in our pan. Remember, we're making salmon, and this isn't a regular burger, so without all of the fat content, you do want to add a little bit of oil to your pan. And once the pan is hot, we'll go ahead and put both of our burgers right in. So you wanna make sure not to press down on the burger or really disturb the burger for at least a few minutes. Wait about five minutes before flipping and you should have a nice golden brown color. And then continue to cook for another five to seven minutes until completely cooked through. All right, the burgers are done. They smell so delicious. I'm gonna show you how to finish assembling it. So our burger is all ready to go. We've got our kale from earlier and the dressing that we made. I just wanna add a little bit of the dressing. So you don't wanna do this too early because you want your kale to be really nice and crunchy. We're just gonna give it a toss. This is so delicious. The sesame flavor plays so nicely with the garlic and the ginger. We're gonna put some of this kale slaw right on top of our salmon. We've got some hoisin sauce, and we're gonna put that right on the top bun. This is one of my favorites, our salmon burger with a kale sesame slaw. Hi guys. 
guys, it's Vanessa here. I've got a quick tip for refreshing some stale bread. It's still good, it's a little bit hard. Check it out. So you're literally going to run this bread over some water, just like this. And then we're gonna just cover this with some foil. And we'll put it right into the oven. We're gonna go into the oven at 350 to 375 degrees depending on convection, and we'll leave it in there for about 10 to 15 minutes. So our bread is nice and soft and steamy. Only takes a few minutes. And I like to serve my bread with some roasted garlic olive oil. Delicious. All right guys, for this next burger, I'm gonna show you how to make a bacon cheeseburger. I've been making this one for years. It's one of my favorites. It's got really thick cut bacon with a little maple on there, and we're gonna make a roasted pepper sauce. So let's get started. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is shape the patties. And what I like is a ground sirloin. I also like a ground chuck. When you go to the grocery store, you'll see 90-10, 80-20. This meat that I have is 85-15, and those numbers just represent how much fat content is in the meat. So the higher the second number, the more fat content. And the more fat content means a juicier burger. So I always tell people, as much as you love organic and all of that stuff, if your meat is too lean, you may end up with a dry burger. We're gonna go ahead, this is about one pound of meat, and we're gonna go ahead and shape this into two patties. So what you wanna do is you wanna just sort of shape this into a ball. And the best way, in my personal opinion, is to just not do too much with the meat. I like to just use like regular beef and then just season it with salt and pepper. And you can get a little bit more creative with whatever sauces or mayos that you use. But I like to keep it pretty simple when it comes to the beef patty. The other thing is you can see I'm making this pretty wide and that's to allow for shrinkage. So even though it looks like it's a pretty wide burger and way bigger than the bun, it's gonna shrink up. And if you start wide, then you don't end up with a golf ball size burger at the end. So here we go. So we'll go just like that. It's okay if it's not perfectly round. This actually ends up tasting pretty great on the edges, nice and crispy on the edges. So we'll put that here. We'll do the second one. My guys love love when I make cheeseburgers at home. It's like one of the things they ask for. I think between Taco Tuesdays and home burgers, that's what I get the most requests for. So I enjoy it and it's a lot easier than making lasagna. So we're just gonna add now basic seasoning, pepper, and some salt. And that's all you have to do to get your meat prepared. I also wanted to show you guys one other thing we have for this burger is we have some bacon. So I prepared the bacon in advance, but I do wanna show you guys, we're gonna drizzle a little bit of maple syrup on our bacon, and that's all you have to do to get this ready. Each burger is gonna have one or two slices. The key to this thick cut bacon is I actually asked for it at the meat counter, so they did a really thick slice. If you have that option at your meat counter, at your grocery store, go for it. You get really thick bacon and it takes your burger to a whole nother level. All right guys, so the sauce that we're making is a roasted pepper sauce. It is so delicious, you're gonna love this one. And I'm gonna show you guys a really quick way to roast your peppers at home. This technique requires you to have a gas cooktop range. If you do not, you can still make these in the oven and the recipe is in the description section. But check it out, follow me. All right, so after the peppers have been steaming in the bag for about 15 minutes, we're gonna go ahead and take them out. Let me show you guys what it looks like. So we've got this really great char, and you can use your hands to just peel off the skin. It comes off really easily, and that's because we steamed them. So the steaming process is sort of 
what makes the skin really nice and soft. And what you're looking for too is the pepper is not completely mushy, so it's still sort of firm, but you can see it's kind of collapsed here. So we'll take all of the char off on both peppers. Okay, so we're gonna take the seeds out. You can just use this with your hands, actually. Open that up. We'll do the same with this one. Take the seeds out and the stem. And what we're gonna do is just do a nice, fine chop of our peppers. So you can just use a chef's knife. The great thing about this sauce, too, is that it keeps for a few weeks in the refrigerator. Go ahead and give this a nice, fine chop. Okay, so we're gonna take our peppers and we're gonna add them to a mixing bowl here. So you can see these are just really nice and fresh, so delicious. And then we're gonna add a few different ingredients to really sort of punch this up. This is some roasted garlic cloves. Just give those a little mince as well. When I roast the garlic, it softens the flavor, so it's not you know, too intense. It has a really nice, almost like a sweetness to it, and it just sort of adds that extra depth of flavor that we're looking for. And then we're gonna add two more ingredients, a smoked paprika. You can also add chipotle chili powder if you are really into the extra spice, the heat. And then we're gonna add a splash of vinegar. We're just sort of looking for that acid. We have our sauce, we have our bacon, we're almost there, all we need is our burger. I'll show you guys how to put it all together, so let's go. So I'm starting with a cast iron skillet for this one. As we know, cast iron just gets really nice and hot, always stressing how everything needs to be so hot. But we're gonna lay our burgers right down into the pan. For this, we don't wanna add any oil. So we're gonna sear our burger for about five to seven minutes on each side, depending on how done you like your burger. So a little bit longer if you're looking for medium to well done. When the burgers are ready, turn off the heat, place your cheese on top of your burger, and then the bacon on top of the cheese, cover with the lid, and let steam for about 30 seconds until the cheese is melted. These are amazing. Check it out. We're gonna go ahead and put these on the bun. So place your burger on your bun, top it with the red pepper sauce we prepared earlier, and you are ready to go. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed these burgers. Now let's take a look at this week's Conversations with Christian. guys thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode we've been getting some great questions from you and again I'm so thankful for everyone who's been tuning in so I have a question here from B Calrissian and he wants to know what is a good gift to bring a hostess when you've been invited over to someone's house so for me whenever people are coming over of course I love if anybody brings wine or cheese or flowers, you know, some of the quintessential hostess gifts. But if you feel really close to the person, it's always great to send a quick text message and find out if they need anything. For me, it's always ice. My ice maker is definitely not going to make enough ice for the amount of cocktails I like to serve. So definitely just reach out to your hostess, but you can't go wrong with a nice bottle of wine, some beautiful flowers, and maybe even some cheese. I got a question from At Numbers by Nomad, as well as a few others, about how long do I keep leftovers in the fridge. So my rule of thumb is really just a two-day rule. I don't really keep anything in the fridge past two days. It's just an easy rule, you know, you can't really go wrong and you don't have to worry about food going bad or spoiling. So two days is a really good rule of thumb to keep leftovers. 
That's it for this week. We'll be back next week with some all new recipes. We've got conversations with Christian and some tips because if it's Monday and four o'clock, you're at home with me, Vanessa Kontov. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.